All right, a couple of weeks ago, I showed you how to talk to your Mac. Now I'm going to show you how to get your Mac to talk to you. It's time for Hands on Mac. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit LastPass.com slash Twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by Roman. Get ED medication discreetly delivered to your front door. Go to GetRoman.com slash HOM for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hands on Mac. You remember a couple of weeks ago, we, we did a little voice, voice dictation uh, thing with the Macintosh. Didn't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> I find it works better at home. I don't know why it didn't work here in the studio. Now I'm going to show you something that will work. This is how to get your Mac to read to you. A lot of blind listeners uh, tell me that they use voiceover uh, on a Mac or uh, something called JAWS on the PC to read the screen to them. Now that's not what I'm talking about exactly. Although where we're going to go and turn this on, you can also turn on voiceover if you want. What I'm looking for is a way to take long, boring text articles, some of them I have written, and, and turn them into voice. Either have them read to me uh, right from the Mac or to save them as a voice file that I can add to uh, my phone and listen to at my leisure. So once again, to do this, we're going to go to the Accessibility System Preference pane. Uh, as usual, accessibility is the place where a lot of cool features are hidden away. It's uh, the Vitruvian Man icon, that blue one, right here. And in order to do uh, this, we're going to... Go to the speech option right here on the left. And you notice we have some choices of system voices. And we have a really handy little checkbox here. Speak selected text when the key is pressed. By default, it's off. But if I check it, the default key is option escape. So if I select text, any text, and press option escape... Uh, the Macintosh will read me that text. Now, the default voice, Alex, isn't bad. Most people recognize me by my voice. But there are other choices. In fact, if we select Customize from that menu, you'll see there are a lot more choices. There's a Siri voice. Uh, there's a Samantha voice. There's also some leftover voices from the old days of computing. This was an original Macintosh voice. You want to hear what voice synthesis, synthesis sounded like in 1984? Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk to you? <laughs> We've gotten a lot, a lot better. But I would suggest sampling some of these voices. Samantha's quite nice. You're going to look for voices that have this additional checkbox, upgrade to enhanced quality. That means it will download additional files to make the voice sound even better. This is Samantha. Hello. My name is Samantha. I am an American English voice. Alex is also one of those enhanceable voices. That's the, the normal voice. There's Bruce. I sure like being inside this fancy computer. He really does sound like a synthesized voice. I think one of my favorites is this one. It's Tom. Hello. My name is Tom. I am an American English voice. I would suggest staying away from novelty voices, although <laughs> you can have some fun uh, with some of the novelty voices. This one's called Bad News. The light you see at the end of the tunnel. Could you understand that? Is the headlamp of a fast approaching train. <laughs> the light you see at the end of the tunnel is the lamp of a fast approaching train. That is bad news. There's, there's also good news. It's not that good. Congratulations! <laughs> These have been okay. Okay, okay. You, you, you can stop now. These have been around for quite some time. They're fun to listen to. It would be fun to play with them. And I'll tell you, there is one good use. Uh, for these silly, they call them novelty voices. It's also possible to get your Mac to speak remotely. I'll save that trick maybe for another day. But I used to have fun playing with the kids as they're on the Macintosh, getting it to talk to them using some of these novelty voices. You'll see additional languages. There's Arabic, Chinese, all kinds of Chinese, Czech, Danish. 
uh, Apple's really good at uh, at all of these. And sometimes people want English, but English with a twist. I'm a big fan of the male Siri voice from South Africa. Here's a female voice from South Africa. Hello, my name is Tessa. I'm a South African English voice. Or how about Serena? Hello, my name is Serena. I am a British English voice. You notice one of the things you might notice about the enhanced voices, not only do they sound a little better, they synthesize a little better, they don't have as much little kind of weird background noise. There's a kind of a mechanical sound that comes through on some of these voices that bugs me. Hello, my name is Daniel. I am a British English voice. So choose the voices, and I say that in plural, the voices you like, because you will have a chance to use these voices in a variety of ways. Notice, though, when you do that, the selected download size. These voice files can be big. I've selected a handful of voices, and I've already got almost two gigabytes of data that I'll be downloading uh, so that I can use some of these voices. Uh, that's just something to keep in mind. It takes up disk space, and, of course, it takes up uh, download space. What should we use? Should we use uh, Victoria for our speech? Isn't it nice to have a computer that will talk? Maybe not. <laughs> uh, how about, uh, I guess we'll stick with Alex. Now, remember, I've turned on this feature, Option Escape, to speak text. Let's let's see how well that works. I'm going to take a little uh, paragraph from a blog post here, and I'll just copy it. That's the way that you select it. And then I'm going to press Option Escape on my keyboard. Lynn ends up falling in love living in a slum, acting as a medic to its denizens, becomes a gangster, is shockingly beaten in an Indian jail, runs guns, money, and fake passports, and even joins the Mujahideen guerrillas in Afghanistan. But the most memorable part of the book for me is the... All right, that's enough. I pressed option escape again uh, to stop it. So that's a very handy feature. But there's one more that you might be interested in. And I mentioned... One of the fun things that uh, you can do is turn any text file into a music file that you can then put in iTunes, or I guess they call it music on Catalina, and copy to your iPhone and other devices. That's a really nice feature, and it's something that you may have to turn on. It belongs in the services menu, so you'll need to go into your keyboard control panel and make sure that that's turned on. You can even, if you want, assign a keystroke to it. So let's go back to System Preferences, Keyboard. We're going to talk a little bit more about Keyboard next week because there's a lot of fun things you can do uh, on Keyboard. And then we'll go to the Shortcuts area. That's the third tab in. Shortcuts uh, is where you can assign keystroke shortcuts, but you can also add services. Now, I don't know if you've ever used the services menu. This deserves maybe a few hands-on Mac episodes because services are so very powerful. But if we scroll down and look, there's so many services. If we scroll down, we'll see that there is a service under text called add to music as a spoken track. I can assign a shortcut to that, but I can also, in most applications, and by the way, this is not a feature available in all applications, but it is available, for instance, uh, in Safari. I can go to the menu for the application, and you'll see a services menu entry. Once I've selected text, it'll show me the things I can do to text, including, yes, add to music as a spoken track. As soon as I select that, and it will say iTunes in older versions, it will actually take this, speak it, and add it to my iTunes or my music. You can choose the voice. You can choose where it saves. Let's use a different voice today. Not Bubbles. No, I don't like Bubbles. Is, has Tom downloaded yet? Look at all the voices. Ting Ting? What is Ting Ting? What do you think that sounds like? Once, <laughs> Let's play it and see. Isn't it nice to have a computer that will... Mm, maybe not. <laughs> I liked Victoria. We'll go with Victoria. I can even assign a uh, computer short, uh, keyboard shortcut to this. So add music to spoken track. Let's see. What should that be? Um, how about... I don't want it to interact with anything else. Control, Command, Option, R for read to me. How about that? No. Nope. How about, yeah, there it is. Control, Command, Option, R to read to me. I think that's good. What do you think? You like that? All right, let's try it. 
<laughs> so now I'm going to zoom in on this text. I've selected this text here. Control Command Option. Let's make sure we have this selected. Control Command Option R. Oh, look at that. Yes, turn it into music. And now it'll add it to the music. It'll sync to my iPhone. I can play it anytime I want. This is a great way to take an article that you just don't have time to read and uh, bring it with you in the car using that nice service. Now, if you want to do that a lot or you have a bunch of text files you'd like to convert, you can even do that with Automator. Automator is a whole different episode. It's a lot of uh, specialized features, but we are going to get to that. In fact, I'm going to use some Automator next week as well. So um, maybe we'll do a whole Automator episode in a future hands-on Mac. It's a really nice feature. Shorthand, for those of you who understand Automator, it's possible uh, to take that service, save it as an icon, an Automator icon, and then just drag files over to it. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Hands on Mac brought to you today by our friends at Roman. Anyone who's dealt with erectile dysfunction knows how awkward it could be to talk about it in person. Roman connects you with a doctor, licensed in your state, no embarrassment, just discreet professional care, and genuine prescription medication or over-the-counter treatments. They have a lot of them delivered in unmarked packaging. There are no commitments. You can cancel at any time. If you're struggling with ED, no need to be embarrassed or suffer. Stay home and go to GetRoman.com slash H-O-M for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. That's GetRoman.com slash H-O-M for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. Well, that's this edition of Hands on Mac. Now I've taught you how you can get your Mac to listen to you while you dictate, how I can get your Mac to read to you. Next week, we're really going to delve into this keyboard system preference pane. There's a lot you can do. Keyboard magic next Friday on Hands on Mac. I'm Leo Laporte. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. Check out other shows here on Twit TV, including my show, Hands on Photography. On this show, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of your camera, as well as be a better post processor. So head on over to twit.tv hop and subscribe now.